Okay. I'm very pleased to be here. First time in Geekon. Second time in Prague, but I'm leaving tomorrow, uh, tonight, so cannot visit. You have Slido for the question. Um, I have a gift for you, but only for the front seat. So if you far, sorry. You can call your friends or colleagues on other rooms to come back, come here. OK, we are going to talk about JavaScript, right? <laughs> no, don't leave, don't leave. Uh, software architecture, like clean, archigon, clean architecture and um, hexagonal architecture. OK, first of all, I want to quote Martin Fowler. Who knows Martin Fowler? No, <laughs> not personally. OK, most of, of you. He's a co-creator of the um, Agile Manifesto. So he said, architecture is really important. Things that are difficult to change are the initial architecture, culture, and skill of the team. That's why it's important to get it right from the start. It doesn't mean you have to know the details of the architecture. You have to imagine everything, because you are going to be stuck to be blocked, to be frozen. So you have to, to be flexible. Architecture, arch architecture to be flexible. Um, culture, because you, um, you have to let time for the, for the people to, to learn, to do mistakes, um, and uh, evolve. And the skill of the team, you, you must hire professional, not a bunch of junior or whatever in other countries. So you, you have to have some people that are good. Not all the one, but some, at least. Um, so he, he co-created the Agile Manifesto uh, that said, um, before, uh, instead of comprehensive documentation, we want working software, right? For, Instead of following a plan, we want to respond to change. Instead of processing and tools, individuals and interactions. Instead of contract negotiation, customer collaboration. Uh, before we have contract, and um, sometimes feature was cool for the users, but it was not in contract, so we don't do, do it. And sometimes feature are useless, but we do it because it is a contract. And organization took the, the Agile manifesto and um, started to, 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 to do um, certification. And they forgot the developer's part. Who is developer here? Everyone? Cool. Um, so um, the software craftsmanship came and said, oh, they forgot us. So, OK, it's cool to have a working software, but not only working software, well craft software, because we have to maintain them, we have to make them evolve, not only responding to change, but also steadily adding value, not only individual and interaction, but also community of professionals. We are professionals. Not only customer collaboration, but productive partnerships. This is the software craftsmanship. So who am I? I'm a craft coach. Uh, so far, I build people, uh, develop. I'm from France. Who speaks French? No one? OK, so I will continue in English. <laughs> Damn. Uh, I'm doing some audits, some training. I'm a tribe leader in uh, Octo Technology. That's a French company that was bought by Accenture five years ago. Um, I'm also a speaker, content creator. You have my uh, social media here. Different name for different social media. Don't do it. It's a pain. <laughs> uh, I wrote a book. I will talk about it later. And before that, I was a developer, tech leader, architect, even manager. I was lost. OK, I wrote a, a book named Test Culture. It's only in French. You can download it for free, but it's also <laughs> only in French uh, with two of my colleagues. But I have other colleagues that wrote a book in French and also in English, Ooh. Code Culture. And this is the books you are going to win. 
You can download it for free in, in that uh, QR code, PDF. Uh, to win this, I I'm going to, to throw shurikens, so be careful, the eyes. And uh, after the talk, you give me back the shurikens, and I, you can talk, take one of the book, or a duck. <laughs> so we're going to, to do a test, because uh, everyone is doing tests now. Wow. Good. No applause? OK. <laughs> OK, I'm going to do some history, the, the period that, I, that I, when I, when I start uh, computing. Uh, before, um, the first decision we made before, it was uh, what database are we going to choose? We didn't know what we were going to develop, what data we're going to to analyze, but we know what database uh, in what database is going to be uh, to be saved. The second decision was another database bug tracker because we are doing a lot of bugs, so that's cool. <laughs> and then that's all. We develop major uh, decision. We develop, and sometimes we have bugs. Sometimes every day we have bugs, and. So, but we have a bug tracker, but we fix them, we break another things, we fix them again, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. People are well, not pretty sad, and it's got a lot of uh, money. Why is that? Because the code with this a spaghetti architecture, everything is connected to everything, the the functional, the business, the technical, everything. So if you take one part, you, you break another part. Anybody um, have uh, this? No? Cool. Oh, yes, one person. OK. Uh, this is a spaghetti dependencies. So well, in English, you, you, we call it a big ball of mud. So it's pretty complex. Uh, so one person knows this, so for, for those who don't know this, uh, we had to do manual testing. So we have a team that do, was doing manual testing. Mm, again and again, version after version. And um, while they, it's, it's pretty timely, they're not testing everything. Uh, they said, what, what did you touch? This, this part? OK, I'm testing other part, uh, this part. And it's breaking because it's sp spaghetti sauce, spaghetti uh, code. So for those who don't know what it is, again, and in, in real life, it's like you have a top manager who said, Mrs. Jones has an electrical problem. Can you please help her? You go there, and you see that. OK, that's a spaghetti. Uh, we, ha we are in the theater. Oh, yeah, this is uh, you facing a spaghetti code. It hurts. <laughs> we are in theater um, to see movie. So if a spaghetti architecture were a movie, it was this. Indiana Jones and the Raiders of Lost Ark and the spaghetti architecture. We have archaeologists seeking for human trace. And uh, it's the same in the code seeking from human intelligence. So we decided to structure the, the code. So we have layered architecture. We have a part that communicates with the users, a part that communicates with the data source, whatever, and a part to do the, some business. It was cool at first. And then we saw little tomato dripping, little cheese dripping. Why is that? Because we choose the database. We, we have a model that is reflects the database. And this model is everywhere, every layer. So when we touch the database, the columns, the tables, we touch the object, and then we touch the, the business rules, we touch the GUI, etc. So not so separate. We had this 
This is a tree of uh, layer architecture. This, you have three layers, controller, service, persistence. So if we have two, two files, that's OK for reservation and administration of an hotel. And then you have a room service, and then you have car service, and then you have financial service, and the same for controller, and the same for persistence. And then you have a elevator. And the, the, the reservation and administration is the object that represents the table. And they are everywhere. And then uh, my con said, well, manual testing is bad. We have to, to do automatic tests. So if we, you, we have unit tests that is fast, not costly. And uh, it, it was a small portion of code, the minimal portion of code. Then you have integration test with parts of the code. It was more, co more expensive, more uh, the run is more take too much time, much much time, and then we have end-to-end, uh, -end, uh, et cetera, security. So it was better, but not uh, not good enough. I will explain later. For those who doesn't know what layer is. It's like Mr. your top manager, the best. Mr. John has a problem with the pedestrian crossing. Can you help her? You go there. Normally, the, there is a sidewalk, a street, and the river. And the river is everywhere. A developer facing layer business as code. Cool. Then you start wanting to code. You open a file. Woo. And if it was a movie, it, w it will be Titanic. <laughs> Water everywhere. Whoa. OK, so we did, it's a big problem. So we have to divide into small problem, and it, it will be better. But if you don't know how to divide a, s a big problem in the monolith, do you think if you're doing microservices with the network, it will be better? No. You are going to do a a small uh, lasagna, small uh, spaghetti, small lasagna, small spaghetti, with a network, with a spaghetti in, in the middle. For those who never work with microservices, it's like Mr. Jones has an internet connection problem. So internet, you, you have a block in the street, a lot of work, a lot of block. So everything is... Uh, for the for the connection of the people on the street, but when you when you open it, it's you can have this. Uh, this is a developer facing microservices. Well, there is a bug. Why? Why the log? Log everywhere. <laughs> and for a movie, if microservices were a movie, well, bad microservices were a movie. It was tiny little cute thing, you know cute, tiny, but if you feed them after midnight, it's grammings. <laughs> Dangerous. OK, the value of the application is your, the domain, the business, it's a complex domain. Um, it's why you, you, you get in money. Uh, it's what you, the difference with the, uh, the concurrence, the competitions. And it's more sustainable that the technology, the frameworks, library, that evolves very quickly. So you have to, to build an a software architecture that is less pain for you, that, that you can change, that could be flexible, and protect you from the technical changes. I like to quote Nietzsche. No one has did it. So the, the good idea is like an arrow shot into the air falls to be picked up by someone else to be shot further. So if you think there is a good idea, keep it and uh, throw, throw to your colleagues or, f or friends. This is a democratization practice. I talk about uh, spaghetti code, V model. Then there was agile, some pyramids, 
some uh, continuous integration. And, and now you have to be there. Um, in the meanwhile, there was books, books or blog or whatever, on DDD, on architecture that emerged at that period, but uh, not mostly used. Now they are used. And uh, DevOps, too. Who is there? No. <laughs> In the middle? The last part? Yes. OK. So we're going to talk about hexagonal architecture. Hexagonal architecture is not a French architecture, even if it looks like France, but not. It's from Alisa Coburn. Is the one on the right. <laughs> in 2005, and it's a well-known geometric shape, like the bees doing a unit. So what is the, the goal of the architecture? It's to isolate the value. The value, mostly the business, can be anything else, but the, the business is a good value. So it's to isolate the value from the rest. The rest, what is the rest? From the color, the user, the phone, the computer, VR. And it's to isolate this from the technology, uh, like a database, a mail, a web, web service, whatever. So you, the middle is uh, the, your business, and it's safe. Keep it safe. So no technology. If you put technology, it evolves quickly. So it will be less safe, unless you have a you are professional. So unless you have a good reason, but it must be exceptional. And what it is, it's it's also called port and adapter, because they are port and adapter. So to 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 enter the hexagon, you have a port. It's a contract, and to go out, you have another port, the yellow one. It's a contract too. And the and the hexagon doesn't know the rest. And you have adapter to connect to the port. One to to use the the hexagon and one to respond to the contract of the hexagon. It's like a, a plug when I when I it has a contract, a voltage and a two holes. And it doesn't know if I'm connecting my PC or if I'm connecting a hair dryer. It's the same adapter. We don't know the adapter. Uh, the arrow is the dependency, not the 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 workflow. The workflow is from left to right. You you can call it uh, left right. You can call it user side for the 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 left part, and you can call it server side for the right part. So you have user side adapter and port, and server side adapter and port. There are other names, like primary, secondary, driver driven, and, I, and, uh, and API, SPI. SPI is for service provider interface. Uh, when I talked to Alistair, he told me uh, he's not comfortable anymore with driver, because um, here, we have a good font, but sometimes the R and the N can be mixed up. So no driver, it's now driving. And the naming, he, he told me he like uh, doing four verbs plus e ing and the uh, and nouns, like four booking rooms, the the contract, and the other one for adding room reserver reservation to the system. But it's only naming. You can call it whatever you want. So what's uh, a port in, uh, in Java? In Java, it's an interface. The, so we have an interface on the left and interface on the right. And the adapter on the right is the class that implements the interface. And the, uh, the adapter on the left, it's a class that uses the interface. The implementation of the interface uh, of, the right, of the left is inside the hexagon. 
so implement, use. And inside you have simple structure, you have the implementation, but uh, it doesn't tell you what to do inside the, the architecture. Alistair said, uh, I don't care. Do whatever you want inside, spaghetti code. And in the outside, I don't care also. So do whatever you want. So you have an, a class that implements this uh, interface and use the other interface. So you know Java, so I put some, some code. For example, you have uh, the left port for booking room. You have a method like for a booking room. You, 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 you give the number of nights, the, the date, the number of bed, whatever. And the adapter call it, giving the, the data. And, and after, you, have, you want to, to, to save it where you don't know and you don't want to know. So you, you're using the, the port, the interface, like for adding reservation. You, you give an organization and uh, the system will be saved somewhere. For example, we have a, a JPA class, but it can be file, it can be whatever, that uh, implement the, the port and doing the job, the technical job. This is inside, you have the, the a class that implement the left port. Um, because we have inversion of, uh, of control, we don't know what the, the class using to use. We don't know what class we are using. So you have to do some trick. This is an dependency injection, for example. And then you can use it. You, you, you use the interface. You don't know what class you're using, but you, it will do the job. And you add the reservation to the system. Maybe it was, it's going to be saved, persist, uh, sent to a web service. We don't know. And then you can have multiple uh, adapters. You can change. You can uh, have a REST controller, a, a batch. Uh, on the other side, you can uh, have a SQL, no SQL, a file, web services, whatever. And you can have multiple adapters for one port. Why not? One is for the uh, website, and uh, another is for the uh, batch uh, at night. And the first adapter I'm writing, it's a unit test. And the first adapter on the right I'm writing, it's a test double, like a stub. And then my unit test is not a small piece of code. It's uh, all the hexagon. So I'm using TDD, so if I'm, I'm putting unit test first. Then I'm, I'm designing the hexagon to respond to the test. And then in my refactor, I can move thing around inside the hexagon. The test is always green. So that's cool. You can have mul multiple adapter. So you can do a, a pyramid, but your unit test is not a small portion of code. It's uh, a behavior. The unit is a behavior. And then the integration test is for testing my adapter. Because it's integrating the, the, with the, the rest. And to, do, to, to know if uh, everything is, is working fine, I can do so one component test. Sometimes some, some I call it end-to-end, -end, even if there is no GUI, whatever. Why not an octagon? Because it's dangerous in hexagon, octagon. <laughs> no, um, the, you have a video, one minute video. It's for the symmetry um, to put uh, uh, port and adapter, enough room to put port and adapter. But you can have three ports. Uh, it's an hexagon because it's just a logical, logical view. This is a tree structure, for example. I have my, my hotel reservation, and the core is the hexagon. So I have my, my port user side, that is an interface, my port server side, also an interface, and in the middle, application, 
the, your model, business model, whatever. And you have, a, then you have the ad side, adapter user side, and adapter server side. Why did I put a, a package core when I see a import in the, in the file? If I see hotel.reservation.adapter, then the hexagon knows the external class. So I can control like this. And uh, Alistair don't want you to put uh, the adapter in the same uh, package, room package. You have to, uh, to have two separate packages because uh, he said it's not the same thing. Sometimes people are call it infrastructure and then two packages inside. He doesn't like it. Mm. We have an interface for the port, but does we, do we have to have multiple methods or multiple interface with what method? He said, I don't care. Again. Oh, I forgot to throw my shurikens. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very good. OK, I'm going to. to uh, Alisa is also a co creator of the manifesto, Agile Manifesto. We're going to talk about the clean architecture. It's from Robert Martin, also a co creator. Um, who read the book? If you don't know the clean architecture, don't read the book. There is no code. The, the architecture uh, is on page uh, 200. But uh, it's a good book if you know well the, the architecture. OK, it's this. It's no hexagon. It's a circle. It's, the goal is the same. In, inside entities, you have the, your business. And your use case. Is, is in is a port to access to the to the business, and then you have controller that, that the adapter to to call the use case, and the use case is calling the database through a gateway. And then you have a little schema on the right. Nobody understand it. <laughs> then, <laughs> okay, we talk about it later. Uh, if we do a parallel with the hexagonal, your hexagon is inside the two circle, two inner circle, use case and entities. So the use case for application business rules, like uh, I want to book a room, and, and uh, we have two, three parameters, for example. And the uh, entities is the uh, enterprise business rules, like uh, on Sunday, uh, it's 20% off, for example. So this is a workflow. The database is on the left. And no technology inside, for the same reasons as before, unless you have a very good reason to do it. And this is a small schema on the, on the left. So controller is an adapter calling an interface. Then you have a class that implements an interface and calling uh, an interface to deal with the database or whatever. This is the same as the hexagonal architecture. What is different is the, the top part. The, the method you're calling has an interface because it returns void, always void. So if you want to, to, to get the list of the rooms, available rooms, it's void. So how do you do it? You have an interface in the method. And when the controller calls the method, it has to give a class that implements that the interface, and we guarantee that the use case is going to call it. It doesn't know what it was going to do, but it was going to call it, and the and then he's going to call the implementation of the presenter. Like uh, for example, if you want to to transform a list of uh, available rooms into a JSON, you can uh, put a, a JSON presenter. You can give a JSON presenter to the use case. And it will do, do the job. Code. So here you have an interface, room presenter. So void. And it will, it, it will, the use case will call it with the rooms. You see in the, the code below. 
you get the room from the gateway, and then you call it, call the presenter. But it does not know what it's going to do. And you can put a JSON presenter, whatever. I put string to know. To you can see it's. A, you can do whatever you want. So you have to to implement the execute method. You transform the list into JSON, and then you have to to get it back. And that's how do you you extract data from uh, the the inner circle. If we Mixed, we, we do a clean architecture in the hexagonal representation. That's this. The adapter is a controller plus presenter implementation. The use case input port, what is it is uh, the interface. And the output port is the interface of the presenter. And then you have the gateway abstraction interface and the gateway class. So it's the same goal. Instead, in the middle, it said you have to put your behavior inside the entities. Don't put your behavior in the use case. So you have a use case interactor that implements the interface. And then you have business uh, object with data and behavior. So if your room uh, is max 2,000 euros, you have to put it in price because it's max. You cannot uh, go further. Don't put it in a room type or book or uh, use case or whatever. This is an uh, example of a tree structure. So if you have business rules with entity and use case, gateway, and outside the inner circles, you have controller and gateway. But you call it, call it whatever you want. Nobody use a gateway. And it's, oh, we, we talk about um, spaghetti, lasagna, ravioli, now pizza. So you have to, 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 to put, to, to, to divide into context. Here, my first one is my, my context reservation. So, and uh, the second one is administration. For example, the, the owner of the hotel wants to change the price. And, and me, the client, I will just want to book a room. So you, maybe you have a room in the entity in the re reservation. And maybe you have a room, another room, in the entity of the administration. But it's not the, main, it's the same. Even if there are some property similar, it's not the same. Because I cannot change the price on this one. So there is no way to change the price in the in the room, in the reservation. So if you do this, now you can go on microservice if you want later. You are ready to do it. No more gremlins. The, to, um, in the hexagonal, I said uh, what the size of the port. Doesn't matter. Here, you, you have to, to name the the interface to know what it's going to do and you have only one method so when you you check the the, the package you know exactly wha why why well, you know exactly what your uh, context will do we can book a room modify reservation cancel reservation and list available rooms you don't have to to open class and see whatever he is doing, or read a documentation that nobody read. Conclusion. Uh, in France, we have a, a French quiz, famous quiz, Fast and Curious. There are also, uh, every time, two choices that is difficult to, to, to choose. Or sometimes, it's sometimes if you choose one, everybody said, oh, we're going to try. Star Wars or Star Trek? Who vote for Star Wars? Who vote for Star Trek? Okay, you can fight now. <laughs> so half, half. Okay, so if uh, they ask me what I want, not on this one, but on hexagonal or clean, 
Well, um, I would say sometimes there is no silver bullet. Sometimes none. Because it's not, it's not adapt for everything. For example, sometimes no hexagon and no pyramid. If you don't have complex uh, business, it's useless. You're going to protect nothing. You're going to put interface around nothing. And you're going to, to test nothing. And then you have test of the controller, test of the logic, no logic, test of the database. So your, your productivity is going to be slow. So you can do layer architecture like uh, transaction script. And um, to test this, you test everything in one, uh, one test. You go straight to the database and then in, 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 in back. So this one is good for non for scope that not critical and simple data structure. If you have one uh, logic, like uh, if uh, I'm older than uh, 18 years old, well, you can put an if uh, in the logic, that's okay. If you have all your b intelligence in the b database for some, for some scope, like uh, you want to do a graphic or a dashboard with a complex uh, data, uh, the difficulties is going to, 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 to in ask the database, the, the filter, aggregate the data. So you have, maybe you can create view on the database. So this is uh, your complexity. So you are going to do integration test to ask the database and to, to, to be sure you have the, the good uh, data and then the rest straight. So it's a diamond, a lot of integration tests, maybe some unit test, maybe some end-to-end, -end, but no hexagon, no clean, because uh, the intelligence is on the database side. That's why I, I put a big database. Okay, the, the advantage of the, on the business scope is uh, equivalent for hexagonal and clean. It's a decoupling, isolation, flexibility, sustainability, testability. You can push back the, the technical choice. You can choose the database later. You can code, you can do demo, and choose the best database for your usage later. Is it a SQL, no SQL? Well, even sourcing? Well, we'll see. You can do front, back. It's okay. The d difference, the main difference is the level of guidance uh, in the hexagonal, I don't care. So, no guide except the interface. In the clean, you have more, more guide. You have the screaming architecture, the presenter, the entity. You have to put behavior inside, et cetera, et cetera. So, that's the main difference. The naming are different, but that's not a problem. You can call it whatever you want. You can change the naming. None of the of those. That's fine. Whoops. So the three important things to remember. Common goals. Isolated value. Different namings. The same advantage. Flexibility, uh, structure, well. But the same drawbacks. No guidance for, for the design of the model inside. You can go to DDD to do this. Uh, it's not suitable for all situation, as I said before. And there is different level of guidance. I'm going to try again. <laughs> Very good. So I did not respond to the previous quiz. In a perfect world, hexagonal or clean? Like uh, in a Barbie world, uh, hexagonal or clean? So I have to answer now. Cannot go uh, silver bullet, etc. So I will say, uh, but the title of the talk, clean archigonal. I take the best of the of each one for each situation. If I have a lot of um, format with the script, with the web service, etc., 
maybe a presenter. If I don't have this, no presenter. Uh, Gateway, I don't use that name. I don't like it. Uh, I take the, the best of, the, of, the, of each one. And I recommend to do, to do this also. Uh, this is a shoe re method. Shoe, it's to protect, obey. It's, a, it's a martial art. You have to learn the fundamentals, and you have to, to, to do it like uh, you, you learn it. Then, when you know it bet, bet, uh, when you know it well, you can detach, degress, find some exception, and then you can do re, quit, leave, transcend, no limit. You can do whatever you want. Clear Kigono, for example. And I'm going to quote Mark Simon, who said, you can only be pragmatic if you know how to be dogmatic. <laughs> so you change something because you know it's not good for your situation, not because you don't know it or because uh, you don't like it. And uh, to, to finish, I'd like to quote again another one, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, the ideal of life is not hope to be perfect, it's a desire to always be better. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, one person hospital, please, emergency. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. There was <laughs> there are always always one. Sorry, it's you. <laughs> no. Oh, lot of questions. When you mention slicing and use cases. Are these use cases similar to the naming of UML times? Not really. There is a lot of terms that we saw, uh, like entities. You, s you have entities in the EJB, in Spring, in, in DDD, Domain Driven Design. It's not always the same thing. Use case is the same. There are words that you 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 listen to it, and you you find them in a lot of uh, place, but not quite the same. If there if there is no tech inside the gun, what there vacuum? Uh, I show you uh, two uh, architecture with no no tech inside. Sometimes you just you have a, a screen to administrate something, and you don't have a business, but you you have to to have a screen when the user uh, change the, the data. But well, you put it in the context somewhere, and you have another context with big business, and you do uh, another uh, architecture and another testing strategy. You can have multiple strategy in all contexts, like microservices, but even in the monolith. To execute some business logic, how many levels of object mapping is optimal? Uh, 14, 42? No? <laughs> <laughs> is there any compromise to not just map data at every level? Mm. So inside the hexagon, or the the entities, you have to do a business model that suits you to implement the, the business. And in outside the hexagon, you have the persistence model with the Hibernate, uh, whatever. And in, yes, you have to do a mapping between those two. But if one change, you don't have to change the other. You just have to change the mapping. So that's the price. But if you change, so some use the uh, Angular Angular JS here, Angular one, yes, Angular two. Then uh, you change everything. There you can change some some elements, but not everything, because you have 
isolates your value. I think hexagonal is the ID and is essential. Clean architecture is a kind of implementation of hexagon. Yes, uh, um, hexagonal, it's do whatever you want. You can do a spaghetti code inside. And uh, Clean said, uh, OK, inside there is this, there is there. You can do DDD tactical pattern also to help you design your, your entities. You can mix up. What does a driving pore have to be an interface? Well, it's, uh, they said you have to have an, an interface, but you can do whatever you want. You're professional. If you said my left interface is useless, fine, clean archegonal, don't do it. But the right one is uh, mandatory. Are annotation metadata bad on the domain models? In the center of the hexagon. Well, um, we can do a fight about this. Um, some put metadata inside. But it's like I said, um, don't put technology inside, but except if you, are, you have a good reason, you can say it's a good reason. Or you can say, no, I don't want any technology, so I won't do it. It's a, a balance. You can, can like a gun all, can do whatever you want. Driven and driver are dependent on the core. Does this mean that core should return domain object to or DTO? Uh, another debate. Uh, some uh, return are returning domain object because they are developing each part and they are not going to do a bad thing. Uh, some say said. No, I don't. I want to protect my domain, and I don't want to to leak my object uh, on the outside. So I'm doing a mapping DTO, and then I'm doing a mapping from my DTO to my persistence domain. So a lot of mapping, and then I'm doing the mapping in my front, and then I'm doing the mapping. Okay, you can do it. It's you have to 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 code to see the, the velocity. If you are slow, maybe there is something that, that is not good. If, if you're quick enough, even with the mapping, that's fine. No more question? Nope. Nope. So for those who are not dead, you can come take your box, duck, whatever. My phone. <laughs> Thank you.